Now that you've all had enough time to get through Resident Evil 3, it's time to dive into this dark, pitch black, unlit, dim, darkish, rayless, shrouded in shadow, void of a game, and see what kind of cool things we can get out of it. On a serious note, did anyone struggle with the darkness in this game? I had my settings at the recommended parameters and I swear I lost half the game to the Shadow Realm, with the only completely visible shots being the cutscenes. Darkness aside, which honestly added to the difficulty for me, so it was welcome, I want to talk about the end of the game and what was in store for us after the first playthrough. After the credits finish rolling, or you skip them like a true gaming G, the game shows you how much of a statistical failure you are compared to its standards. You can finally brag about your ACT scores, as I know we've all been waiting to do. You thought this game was short, wait till you get to grinding out that S plus playthrough. You might as well play an episode of Game of Thrones in tandem as a stopwatch because that's basically what they're asking for time-wise. But all of this is beside the point, because what I want to talk about is what is unlocked after you complete your first playthrough, and that is the shop. Now I know you're probably rolling in coins like I was after the first playthrough, but as you scroll through the things that can be unlocked, it's very important that you listen to me. Don't spend any coins besides on what I tell you. Hopefully this message reaches you before you click buy, but I imagine I'm too late. The reason being is because I devised a simple yet effective way to get more coins but depending on what you buy right out the gate can save you a few hours of grinding. As desirable as a handgun with unlimited ammo seems over a lockpick, it's important to think about what you're about to embark on. As you scan over the records page, you can see what you need to do in-game to unlock more coins and for how many coins you'll get for completing the task. A good portion of them are takedown challenges, which is good because that's kind of the point of this game. We're not catching fish and paying rent, we're surviving a zombie outbreak that has mutant strains of monsters running around as well. For this coin grab to go smoothly, you need to have the last save point of the game when you were playing as Carlos, aka the hospital fight, to get this ball rolling. Luckily for me, as I was playing through the game, I kept the save separate from when I was Jill and when I switched over to Carlos. So I lucked out and didn't have to run through the game again up to this point. Just for transparency's sake, I'm playing on an Xbox, and the difficulty is standard. At no point in this do I switch difficulties to make things easier, but if you were to switch it to the easiest difficulty, it would make this strategy even easier and more effective in the first few attempts of it. When you look at the records and what you can get cleared while playing as Carlos, there's handgun takedowns, assault rifle takedowns, and general takedowns. The good thing about this fight here in the hospital is that you are given the most ammo and enemies among any other moment in this game. So it's the ideal Thunderdome to spend our time grinding in instead of just running the game repeatedly. So, first things first, let's talk about the engagement zone and what we have at our disposal. We have four windows where enemies can enter, but our primary focus will be when we have all the enemies funneling through the front door after we get the shutters down. The most important part about this grind pit is to be efficient. You need to be as accurate as possible, otherwise you won't be able to maximize the number of enemies you take down each time you replay through this fight. There's two generators in the room. Use them. I can't tell you how much I underutilize these make easy buttons throughout the game, but here they're your best friend and the ultimate get out of jail free card. This receptionist desk is your second best friend. Use it to play ring around the rosy with any zombies that get too close and keep them from overwhelming you. And finally, your throwables, either the flashbangs or the frag grenades. Both are ultimate make easy buttons at your disposal, but they run out obviously, so only use them when absolutely necessary. Now with watching my gameplay, you can see how I position myself behind the desk at the left corner. The reason for this is because I'm trying to stay as far away from the window on the right side of the room and keep as many entry points in my line of sight as possible. Also. This position gives me the clearest view of both generators and the door that we must keep zombies from breaking into. I use one grenade on this beta hunter in the beginning stages of my run-throughs, as it's better to use one grenade over the amount of assault rifle ammo you'll consume taking him out. Also because his aggression makes me stress sweat, so it's best to get rid of that noise as soon as possible. Once the mob is only coming through the front door, we can really focus on our numbers and maximize our takedowns. I use my second grenade right out of the gate and when the cutscene ends because the situation in front of me will require a lot of bullets to take care of and we're about maximizing here, not wasting. As you can see, I use this full wave reset to go and grab all the new goodies that have spawned around the room again, making me even thicker with the boom. If you're a metal music fan, I suggest throwing on the Trivium song in waves as it just gets you pumped for the waves of zombies you're about to take on. We get behind our desk and we start taking out enemies. This is where the generator spamming comes in, as while each wave is stunned and you finish the last one or two off, the next wave is coming into the room and you're able to shoot the generator again. 
Endless stun, endless fun. Make the headshots count, and when in doubt, shoot the second generator to keep the wave locked while you situate yourself. You're going to use every shot for every gun until you have no ammo left. Then you're going to wash, rinse, and repeat till you start to complete some of these records. Now remember when I told you earlier not to spend any of your coins unless it was on the things I told you to unlock? Well now's the time. So I'll even admit the first thing I unlocked was the unlimited ammo handgun. Because my thought process behind it was, if I have anything with unlimited bullets, I'll be able to stay in the fight longer. Therefore, I wouldn't have to redo as many times. Well, turns out there's a limit to the amount of enemies that will spawn here in the hospital fight, and you know you're getting close to the end as the game starts to spawn an insulting amount of nemesis infested zombies all at once, who are a lot more durable than any enemy you've fought so far. If you manage to get past them, then you have to restart anyway, so a handgun with unlimited ammo wasn't the best choice that I made. But the best choice for you to make is this, the assault coins. Having just one coin will allow you to put a normal zombie down in two headshots, where the average amount of ammo you would have to spend would be three to four rounds. This doubles the amount of enemies you can put down with the resources you're given now in the hospital fight. Now imagine what happens when you have two coins. That's right. One-shot headshots with the assault rifle makes the task of putting enemies down with this weapon an absolute breeze. Watch how easily I shred this beta hunter with one coin in my inventory. Now watch the same fight with two coins in my inventory. These things are completely broken. Now with only spending 8,000 coins, you've unlocked two items that will make this grind fest a complete breeze while you push towards your completion of these records. One thing I will show you all, and it became a favorite thing for me to do as I, and you will, become bored of this grind, is called mowing the lawn. So first you get your assault coins, and then you get the hot dodger knife. As soon as the enemies are only coming out of the front door, throw a frag grenade to clear the room. Then set yourself up right at the front door, just on the other side of the barrier the zombies crawl over to get in. And you guessed it, you mow the lawn. With the damage increase from the assault coins, the hot dodger puts zombies down in 3-4 to four swings, and you're guaranteed to get 3-5 to five swings in before they ever make it over the barrier. You just have to watch the sides for the 2 of the 5 that will get just barely out of your mighty swing radius. But in doing this strategy, you will enrage the Resident Evil 3 gods, who will flip the difficulty adjustment switch, and all of a sudden, a wave will come over the wall that turns into nemesis infested zombies, and will take an insulting amount of damage to kill. Just watch this happen to me, and remember, as I have two assault coins still in my person. It goes from taking the one-shot kills to unloading almost entire mags per zombie. I don't agree with difficulty adjustment programming, but as games become more sophisticated, game makers view this as a way to be able to cater the gaming experience to whomever is playing. Having this blatant moment happen right before my eyes can only make me question as to whether or not something like this could exist in a first-person shooter game. As when I was playing Battlefield 5, I swore there was a point in the match where the enemy team would be getting completely wrecked, then all of a sudden, it felt like I would die easier and they would take more bullets to put down, and the enemy would capture points faster if I was playing Domination. I used to think I was crazy imagining something like this could be happening, but now I feel like it would be foolish to rule such a thing out. But that's a topic for another time. I hope you find this technique helpful in your journey to unlocking all the cheats you desire in Resident Evil 3. If you find other ways to grind out the other challenges in a relatively time-saving manner, be sure to share them in the comments down below, as I look forward to hearing from you. And be sure to be on the lookout for other videos we have in the works, as we have some really great things to show you here in the near future. So, this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this content, would you kindly consider subscribing to the channel as we have a lot more ground to cover and I'd like for you to tag along for the ride. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.